for this tutorial, I'm going to use what's called the Ozone 9 Mothership plugin, which is where you can add all the different modules, no matter which ones. Mainly because if you use the individual modules, assuming you have Ozone 9 Advanced, the options are limited. And to find the options, you click the gear icon in the upper right corner right here. And I'm going to go left to right to make things simple. If you don't like tooltips being on when you hover over different controls, you can disable them with this option. I like to keep the controls dimmed when they're bypassed so it's an easy visual indicator that they're not on. But if you don't like that, then you can click this box right here and uncheck it. If you click this button, obviously it lets you check to see if there's any updates to Ozone 9. Over here, we can choose whether Usage statistics are sent to Isotope. So if you want to opt out, you can uncheck it. History depth, I like to keep this at 100 so that when you use the undo over here, you have enough options. 50 is probably enough and it probably uses less RAM or less hard drive space, but 100 is the default and you can even do unlimited. Keyboard support, I like to keep this on minimal so it doesn't conflict with the DAW controls. Or you can choose none so there are absolutely no keyboard shortcuts used. Or full, if you don't care either way. When I have it on full, it actually does conflict with some Reaper shortcuts, so minimal is what I like. Window opacity, this is cool, but I mean, I really don't know how this... I don't know. It's there if you want it. And luckily it only goes to 20% so it doesn't completely disappear and then all of a sudden you can't find your plugin. So usually I just keep it to 100. Authorization. This one involves obviously serial numbers or the iLock. Actually it should just be the serial number. But anyway, that's pretty much self-explanatory. The plugin host options over here are very technical things and more than likely are for tech support and if you are an advanced user, but essentially it has to do with plugin compensation and how tracks are synchronized, especially this control right here. If for some reason they're not working properly, then manually adjusting them might be beneficial, but otherwise I just don't touch these because usually they work down here the question mark allows us to access the user manual the reset button is for the options only so just this tab and if i were to click that it would change everything back to the default to the right of that it shows which version of ozone i'm using and the cancel button if i change any option and i didn't want that to actually be changed i would hit cancel and then bring this back up or if you want to apply the changes hit OK. Next tab is Spectrum and the best way to show you this is to actually play a track and change these options while the tracks being played. So let me do that for you. Now that you've seen some of the options in action, I'll explain what they all are. 
But again, it's best to just watch what's going on and choose which one that you find most useful. Linear spectrum is the standard frequency spectrum line that most digital equalizers in modern times display. Full octave and one third octave split the bar graph spectrums at the octave points. So it kind of reminds me of old 1980s equalizers. Critical is a nice feature because the frequency graphs are split up into areas that the human ear differentiates relatively easily. So for my money, I'd keep it on either linear or critical. The peak hold time. This controls how long, in milliseconds, the peak hold is displayed. And by default, it is off, so you have to choose this box right here. And then I would just watch the graph as some audio plays and choose which one that you like the best. For me, 500 milliseconds or one second is long enough, but if you are mastering, you may want to keep this on infinity so that you can see the absolute peaks for all the different frequencies. Window type, this one is a very technical option. It's most noticeable on the linear type display. And the best way that I would describe on how to set this is watch the meters and does what you perceive in your brain match what you're seeing and hearing. If not, try a different window type. Window size should be used in conjunction with window type Essentially, the higher the number, the greater the frequency resolution. But sometimes, too much resolution is a bad thing. The default of 4096 is usually a good choice. The average time option is also quite useful. When you have it set to real time, it shows near instant frequency display, which for me would be very handy when tracking down sibilance on vocals or if you need to make equalizer cuts for something. If you slow it down, then it allows you to see the track in a big picture sort of way. Now, I believe the user manual actually suggests that if you are trying to match EQ between songs, then an average time of five or 10 seconds could prove helpful. Our final option is the frequency scale, and this actually controls the bottom portion Right down here, it controls how those numbers are spread apart. The MEL option is based on human perception. Log is short for logarithmic, and it's good for most equalization tasks because of the mid-range width. If you're an experienced audio engineer, you understand that the mid-range is definitely the hardest to get right. Extended log, or EXT log, this stands for extended logarithmic and it gives more detail that favors the low and low mids. And finally, flat log gives a good balance between all the different frequencies and allows for easiest overall equalization, so helpful during mastering. I'm going to come over to the I.O. tab because the other options I'll talk about for their respective plugins. First of all, the meter type. Enable IO meters, that's self-explanatory. Detect true peaks, this is handy, but you might not want to have it on. For mastering, I would probably keep it on. And this option is explained perfectly on the tooltip, which is when you bypass ozone, the bypass volume will be matched to the one that you have in ozone, which I would recommend keeping this on. Meter type. I like that there's a lot of options. Because if there weren't, then somebody would complain. <laughs> Basically, it boils down to this. RMS is the old school analog root mean square averaging. Peak is instantaneous sample values when true peak is selected or analog waveform values. Again, I'm going to show you what all these do after I explain them and I'll play some audio, but I'm gonna mute the audio just like I did before. RMS plus peak, the bright bar is RMS, and the dimmer bar is the peak. K system is Bobcat's loudness metering system. 
for those of you who use that, which I used to do for a very long time. Single peak. This one actually I don't think is in the manual, but yeah, I don't even know what this means necessarily, so I'm going to check it out when we play it. I think it's pretty much self-explanatory, but who knows. Now, momentary is loudness that happens over about 400 milliseconds. And short term is loudness that happens over three seconds. Integrated loudness is loudness that happens over the course of an undefined period of time. So I assume that means when you stop playing, it resets itself. Short term plus peak, I would assume that combines the loudness over three seconds versus the peak loudness. So that's useful for maintaining broadcast or music streaming spec. And I've got to say, this menu is a little confusing because it looked like I was going to choose max peak, but that's actually a different setting. It's down here. So again, let me flip through these so you can see what they each do. And we're going to be looking over at the meters on the right side of the screen. So I should mention, because there is now another option once I clicked on K-System, the scale, essentially the way I like to look at it is, if you put it on K-12, this is for like your post-1998 loudness. K-14 is most years before 1998 for loudness, between like 1985 or maybe 88 through 1997. And K20 is for like classical music or jazz. For the most part, I would keep it on K12. Otherwise, your music is not going to be competitive, as we like to say. The autumn leaves look out over vacant seas of doubt from the bleeding branches broken view. So yeah, single peak just shows the maximum peak that the audio is putting out and that's it at the top So again, going back to another option that opens up during short term is, again, th this is a loudness meter. And there are different standards for loudness metering. Depending on which spec you need to adhere to, you choose that with the scale option. And that probably is shown, yeah, integrated loudness. There's different ones. And then short term and peak. Yeah. So all these... Depending on which option you choose, it may open up other options. I should mention if you click on any of these, it will reset it. Now you may be asking me, which one would you pick, Adam? It really just depends on the job. Integrated loudness, if I'm doing anything with video, RMS isn't too bad for audio, even though it's an old school method. I actually like K-System, again, setting it to K-12. But yeah, you just really kind of need to have to know what you're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, I say keep it on RMS and small. All right, next up is the meter scale. This has to do with the numbers that are right here and how they are spread apart. As I change them, you'll see they change. I like nonlinear because you usually want to have the 
numbers that are closer to zero be your widest. Because the lower numbers really don't matter as much, you don't need to see them in fine precision. But if you're using different loudness standards, then these other ones might come in handy. But for me, DB nonlinear is the one I would stay with for the most part. Meter source. We can choose whether it's being metered off the whole stereo signal or just the mid-side. That's more of a mastering thing. 90% of the time, you will probably have this on stereo, if not 99% of the time. Peak hold time, I explain this in the spectrum tab explanations and essentially it's how long the loudest peak is shown. So the lower the number, the faster it disappears and you can also disable it. But if I play the music again, you'll see what it does. It's this thing right here where it's just that little bar. Say, and if I put that on longer, that'll say for five seconds. It's much more obvious now, right? So you can have that really short. You can't even see it at five. Why is that even an option? I don't know. I guess if you don't want to have it on there at all, then cool. All right, 250, so a quarter of a second. I'd say keep it at a thousand. Normally, maybe for mastering, put it on infinity. It resets itself every time you hit play after hitting stop. Integration time. This controls how the root mean square is calculated. 300 milliseconds is your typical analog style VU meter. PPM is super quick, and you can go even longer if you desire, but your two main settings are going to be these. I usually keep it on VU. Again, this is the average. And then finally, readout, which is the number that you see at the top right here. You can have it be the current number, or the max peak. And let's see if that actually is set to stay as the peak hold time. If I have current selected. Yep, so that is tied in with the peak hold bar. Cool. It all depends on what your taste is. For me, I like to have it set so that the max peak stays on unless I hit play again. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comment section below. And if there's enough questions, then I will make a separate follow-up video to answer them. Thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Adam for RealHomeRecording.com, as always.